Massachusetts House and Senate lawmakers meet in formal session for several months a year. But just about every time, they seem to save the best for last, racing against the clock to pass a slew of bills just under the legislative deadline. It certainly adds some extra drama and suspense to it all, but in case you missed this year's flurry, here's where things stand. Among the items the legislature did not get to were a ban on conversion therapy, a gender X option for driver's licenses, equalizing education funding, and a measure aimed at stabilizing health care in the state. They passed an opioid bill that would expand access to the overdose treatment drug Narcan and allow some correctional facilities to start offering medications to help addicted inmates. They also passed a short-term rental tax bill, stronger penalties for animal abusers, a clean energy initiative, and an economic development bill that includes infrastructure and local aid funding, as well as a reform of non-compete clauses. And thank goodness that all-important sales tax holiday for 2018. I'm joined now by the new head of one of the two legislative bodies responsible for all this. As of last week, Senate President Karen Spilka, congratulations on your elevation. Thank you very much. Why'd you want the job? Uh, I believe that my background is starting out as a social worker, and then I think you know I was a labor and employment attorney, yeah. but then an arbitrator mediator as well. So my background is listening, active listening to people, bringing them together, and working through issues to bring them to consensus. Can we talk about a couple of issues where I think you're going to try to bring them to consensus? I know they're in your priority list. Transportation. You said you were upset when the a uh, millionaire's tax was knocked off the ballot by the Supreme Judicial Court, would have provided a billion dollars a year roughly for education and transportation funding. What's the backup plan for transportation money? Uh, right now, honestly, we don't have one. I think that we really need to look at what we need and have a plan, a both short-term and long-term plan. I know I come in through the pike and people think that the pike is among the best highways in the state. It takes me. It used to take me 45 minutes. It often takes me two hours each way now. We need a better plan. We need for not only roads and bridges, but trains and public transportation. Charlie Baker thinks it can be done with no new money. Is he right? Uh, I'd like to hear his plan. Do you think he's right based on what you know? You were the Ways and Means Chair. You know the budgets. Can it be done with existing revenues? I, I think we might need some new revenues. I think that we need a combination of uh, we have done some reform. There's, I'm always mm -hmm. open to discussing more and efficiencies. But I, I think that we really, in terms of our economy, quality of life, and so many other issues, we need to focus among our, on our transportation. Can we talk about the other item, uh, actually the other half of what, uh, where money would have gone, education uh, fairness and uh, leveling the playing field. This is sort of how you got your start in politics, wasn't yeah, it, back home, yeah. that kind of thing? So what's going do we have to, I assume now, we got to wait till next January before something starts up again on this inequity between the Brocktons and the Westons and all, is that what we got to do? Well, I don't think we have to wait till next January. In the budget, we did start implementing the Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations, which included four major topics to increase the adequacy in funding. Years past, we looked at equity, predictability, and made it simpler. Believe it or not, it still is complex, but the adequacy eluded us for all these years. So even though we did not have the money from the millionaire's tax, even though we hadn't passed the bill, we started implementing it, and we implemented several of, of the items. July 3rd, yesterday, this drives me nuts, I have to be candid. I cannot understand why a full-time legislature goes home with five months to go. I know they're in formal sessions, but formal sessions, whether it's the education bill, the fact that, from what I read, horse racing is shut down because you didn't meet a deadline, hospital financing. Wouldn't a sane approach be, we just keep doing this since we're paid until we fix it and not have this arbitrary, let's go home on July 31st thing? Well, I, I look at it and you ticked off a bunch of the things that we did accomplish. And that, I think, the legislature and the state can be very proud. We will lead the nation in many of the areas, mm -hmm. and some in economic development, clean energy, uh, you know, opioid addiction. We usually have things left on the table. Two years ago, the same thing happened. But I do believe we can and have to do better. I think the people of the state expect it. So whether we 
get things earlier up front if we know we have this deadline so we're not at this crash at the end? Or we, I think I'm looking forward to working with Speaker Bob DeLeo, my colleagues and others to, to try to, to make some changes. Would you, changes being maybe two years from now in an election year, you would not go home on July 31st? Is that one of the changes you'd consider? I, I think everything has to be on the table, but people do need to go back. Many people have primaries, that's, which, which this year is the day after Labor Day. They need uh, they five need, months to run in a pri The primary is a month from now. Right. So if they've been working up until July 31st, they'll have just August to campaign. So speaking of Bob DeLeo, DeLeo uh, tweeted out uh, that he was disappointed that you did not agree to bring the Senate into session. You have a smile on your face. The Saturday before this July 31st deadline, you tweeted back. You thought you had sufficient time to to finish the key issues. You didn't have sufficient time to finish the key issues. Do you regret your decision not to not, not all at your all. members in wine. Not at all. First of all, I had no idea that he e expected that or, or okay. thought that we were coming back. Um, last year, we did 70 or 80 overrides in one day. He said that in, at, af before the governor came out with his vetoes. We had a total of 55, so I knew that we would do them. The House has to do them first. So I figured the ones that they did on Friday we could get done in an hour mm -hmm. and a half, and we did. We did them Monday morning. We got all of the work done, so by Monday night, we were caught up. It, I just want to add, it allowed the conferees and the meeting the people who were working on the bills to actually meet and get more work done. Did, did, does it aggravate you that he did what he did, that he tweeted out what he said? You know, I, I just, I'd, I'd rather not communicate by tweets. I am a person-to-person, -person, direct communication person. Speaking of direct communication, you were on Channel 5 or something recently. You've endorsed Jay Gonzalez. Am yes. I right about that? But you said of Charlie Baker, Republican governor, a lot of ways he's done doing a good job. Marty Walsh, another Democrat, said he has incredible accomplishments. Bob DeLeo, another Democrat, has praised his work. If Baker is doing such an incredible or a good job, why should the voters fire him on, in November? I am a Democrat, and I do have Democratic values and beliefs, and uh, I believe that, that there are diff some differences. There are uh, many things that, that Governor Baker has done and accomplished working with the legislature. Well, where's he failed? Where are the things, where's his failure so that, in your estimation, Jay Gonzalez would do a better job? I think, failed. well, for, for one thing, I wouldn't say that he's failed necessarily, but for example, transportation, uh, you know, I do, I did support the millionaire's tax because I believe that we need to invest the billion dollars in education and billion in transportation. Uh, education, we, we need to continue to move it forward. There are too many with the achievement gap in so many cities and towns across the state. That hasn't changed in 20 years since education reform. We need to do better on that. So has he failed on that issue? You, Charlie Baker? I mean, again, it's a big deal to say, throw out the guy that's there who I think is doing well and elect somebody new. I mean, I assume there's some major failures or no? Uh, you know, right now, I, I think that there are differences in, in values and, and things that, that we push for. Then that's my last thing. Will you challenge? I think it's fair to say Democrats could pass anything they want and override any gubernatorial veto. You have that many members. Will, under your leadership, will Democrats on Beacon Hill challenge the Republican governor more than he's been challenged in the past? We'll have to, first of all, we'll have to see if he is governor uh, in, in the future, governor, if he's said. governor. But um, I, it'll have to be on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not going to challenge somebody just for the sake of challenging them either. I, I believe in working together with whoever is, ends up in the corner office. It's important. Massachusetts has been a leader. It would be great if Washington took a lesson from Massachusetts and Beacon Hill in this area. Karen Spilko, congratulations. Thank you so President. much. Look forward to seeing Thank you a lot. You. Thanks so much.